Welcome. So this is a different kind of uh, video for me. I did a sit-down conversation with a student at Evergreen State College. I went up to the college um, basically to see what was going on. He's close to where I live. And I just wanted to get an insider's view of what's going on as much as possible um, in terms of being accurate. What I wasn't seeing a lot of or any of was the perspective of the student. And so I went up there primarily looking at a student or maybe a staff member. That wasn't my, I didn't have a specific person in mind, nor did I have just one person in mind, but it ended up just being one person, which was fine with me because I would prefer a good conversation, something in depth that reflects a more full range of what's going on, both the person and the reflection of the institution, uh, I think was illustrated in this conversation in terms of how he felt about the um, Evergreen State College. Now, there was a mine, um, I did have sort of a, a title in, in mind, Can We Save Evergreen State College? But I think I came to the conclusion that I'd like to say, how can we save Evergreen State College? Now, I know that's, you know, that's a bias, that's a pers perspective, but I'm more interested in saving things than I am destroying things. And I think the student gives a good argument as to why Evergreen State College should be saved. And I think we need to hear that side because there is a call for, and I think a justified call for, um, if the student body is representative of the people we're hearing, the loud ones, the squeaky wheels, if they're the representatives of the college, then we have a serious problem. However, if there are other students that are being silenced by pressure, and when we talked a bit about being silenced, feeling the fear of not being able to have a certain type of conversation. Now, I went on Evergreen State College around 10.30 a.m. I went to the uh, police office and they do have their own police office there. But actually, even before I went to there, that location, I saw two state troopers on, in the parking lot and I went up to them and, and I told them what I was doing and they told me, well, it's an open uh, campus. Um, you do what you think, you know, these are the rules. But if you really wanna know this skinny, go to the office on campus. So that's what I did. I went to the office on the campus and I announced myself, I showed them my, um, my driver's license and I told them that I wanted to get an in interview with a student or students. I wasn't sure what was going to work out. It was quiet. There wasn't much going on. It seemed like a normal um, lull around 10 o'clock. It's not a real busy time. Lunchtime would be a little more busy. A lot, most people in class. There were a couple of people in a smoking area and I asked them if they wanted a conversation. They didn't. Um, and so I moved on from there. Um, and then so I went to the bus stop where the city bus comes and there was a few people there. One person looked eager to be talked to. So I said, are you a student? And he said, yes. And then he confessed to me that he had, um, was hoping to get the word out, to get his perspective out because he thought the news was being distorted about what was going on at Ever Evergreen. So we have a, a conversation which is the majority of this video. And at the end of the conversation, we're about wrapping up. Um, the police officer I talked to earlier about being on campus was pulling up. And there was another guy there kind of agitated. And as I was folding up, he was pointing. He says, you shouldn't talk to him. You know that anything that goes on the internet is there forever, which is true. Um, I didn't have a problem with him saying that. And he says, to me, you're putting his life in danger. You know that, right? Putting his life in danger for the truth, for a good conversation. And and then he went on to, to berate the, the guy that was talking to me. Um, but his primary message was, he's not a credentialed um, reporter. 
which is true. I'm not a credentialed reporter, nor was I truly doing reporting. I was doing a conversation. And I want to make that distinction that I, I do, I let my opinions be known within the conversation. I'm not there as an unbiased conversant. So take that in consideration when you listen to this interview. I'm there, I both, I want his opinion and I want to challenge his opinions as well as have a conversation about those opinions to see where we stand and where we disagree and where we agree. Um, that's what I think a good conversation is. And I think it's important that we have a good conversation. So in part, this is an illustration of a conversation or a type of conversation that I think is fruitful, um, both for all parties involved. So. I think it's fair to say that is my modus operandi and I want to make that very clear in this what people might call an interview I like to call a conversation and I, I am a big believer in this new movement of conversation so it's a little new people don't quite understand why people are making a distinction between conversations and reporting but conversations are meant to be a growth um, so that is a disclaimer for the beginning of this video and I do apologize for the length. I am not going to edit it and there's good reasons to edit it but for completeness I'm just going to show you what actually happened on the campus with all the baubles and blips of the camera that there are plenty of. And, and so take that in mind. I was going to have a third person there, or a second person there for me, and that would have been useful at that point because we would have had someone that could actually do the camera work, and I wouldn't have been stuck trying to keep us in frame or put someone else in frame. Not very good at that. Um, not necessarily selfie sticks aren't necessarily the best for this. So, anyways, I apologize for that, um, and I'm still looking to do better. Um, but keep that in mind when you watch the video. Thanks for watching. a lot going on so I wanted to interview individual people cool. and you are I'm Ryan okay Ryan I'm a student here at Evergreen I can give like a little yeah go um, ahead and, and introduce yourself this is what this is my third year at Evergreen um, and obviously uh, shit's been getting crazy over here um, a lot of a lot of tension with racial issues and, and whatnot um, and I feel like you know honestly I gotta say like I feel like there's people on both sides that aren't um, doing justice to, to what their, I guess, you know, what their cause is, what they're trying to do. Um, yeah, it, it's been rough. I mean, I mean, just being a student and like having like, it's, it's week 10 right now. And just like we've had like three days school close and uh, it sucks because I'm just trying to study, you know, and, um, and it's really hard. It's actually even harder. Um, to go to class and, and everybody's talking about this issue, especially when your views aren't um, the, the popular, uh, what, what would you call it, the popular consensus, you know? The consensus view, okay. Um, and what do you think the consensus view is? Well, at, at least, least on campus. At least what I could say is the loudest on campus, um, at least a week ago, is that um, the protesters on campus are totally um, justified um, in what they did, and I. I, I gotta say I disagree with with the way that they approached um, talking to Brett Weinstein, um, and uh, graduation. you know I don't think it was helpful. Um, I think it's caused a lot of issues, and kind of that's where things es escalated was was right there when when. Um, so do you think um, do you, do you know about Brett's letter at all? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay. I read Brett's letter. That's the thing. The first article that came up um, was an article from Afropunk, and uh, it was it was so biased and and straight, just labeling Brett as a racist, and um, you know, and they're basing that off of the email and then off of um, um, spoken word from from um, from students or, or word of mouth from different students or whatnot and faculty, but. Um, as far as, you know, not being informed, you know, not having a personal relationship with Brett, um, reading the email, you know, there's, there's nothing racist that he's talking about. If anything, he's talking about equity in, in the, um, in the emails. Um, 
So you didn't take offense to the phenotype oh. comment? No, no. Um, I, I guess I, I could look deeper into that, um, but... Um, so what's your major here at uh, Evergreen? Well, well, for those who don't go to Evergreen... Um, or what is your area of study? There, there we go. Yeah, I was going to say, we don't have majors at Evergreen. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, right now I'm doing uh, neurology, neurobiology, and psychology. So I guess neuropsychology. How are you planning to apply that into the real world? Um, Do you think they're going to ask? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody's going to ask someday. Um, I really enjoy research. Um, I don't expect getting a career out of research. Um, I currently... Uh, I'm just like, I, I work as a, as a DJ, um, typically like weddings, high schools and stuff like that. So, so why don't you think you can make a living in this research? I don't, I don't look cause it would take like all, all of my time and all my life. And I don't think I can spend that much time doing research cause, um, I'm really invested in music okay. personally. Um, and so that's why I like DJing, you know, it makes me money and it, it pays the bills, but, um, at least you know uh yeah i but i love the the, the neurobiology um and and its relation to, to psychology you know at least until i figure out what um emphasis you know where i can delve deeper into that so how much longer do you have here yeah i probably got a couple of years left i mean this is my third year but i started late so i'd have to come back for one more quarter and i'll probably just drag it out for the rest of the year so i can graduate you know during the spring so what do you like about Evergreen? Dude, Evergreen is Evergreen's so good. Um, and I'm really sad to see all this stuff happening because like, I would love to see Evergreen stay around, you know? And I guess with everything happening, I'm afraid that like we're gonna lose the school. Um, and it's such a valuable school. Um, and that's because students who didn't do good in um, in traditional school um, in the public school system. I I didn't. I dropped out of high school, and um, you know it, it just it. I feel like you know the whole no child left behind. I feel like I was one of the children left behind because of the public school system. Um, but Evergreen picks picks those kids up and gets them back on their feet. You know, um, and the whole I gotta say the the no grades thing is is very valuable. Um, and Evergreen's um, alternative to that is, is teacher evaluations. So the teacher will, um, over the course of 10 weeks, or some classes are, are a whole year, so 30 weeks, um, is, is the teacher's you know, looking at all the work you're doing and then at the end of it has to evaluate you based on your performance and um, basically decides then whether you get your credit or half credit or whatever and um what's valuable about that is you actually have a human like like looking at like your quality you know and, and how, how you're how you're improving it's not just like numbers that you know um justify how did you how good you did what would you say to the statement you can't change it unless you measure it well i mean I guess as far as like, you know, looking at it through a scientific eye, that's, that's pretty reasonable. Although, um, you know, we're, we're, we're all human and, um, you know, I, what, what worries me about that is if, if we just measure, you know, human capability based on, you know, how good you did on, in a test environment and, and how good you did on homework, it's like this specific way of learning, how good how well you are in this academic setting um, then we're gonna be leaving people behind and then people are you know people aren't gonna do as well so what do you think the ultimate goal of a college should be the ultimate goal of a college is to create a community around learning and research so from the outside perspective what do you think the community outside community gets from evergreen what are the benefits to the outside community that they're getting well we're definitely um picking up members of the community that we would have otherwise lost you know um and i think those members are very important because we come from um you know different different walks of life um you know like that 
you know, I, I, I guess children in poverty, I, I gotta say I grew up um, in I, American poverty, um, which isn't the worst, you know, there's, there's worse types of poverty in the world, but uh, um, I feel like my, my um, attribution to the world is very important because um, I'm unique and I come from a different uh, viewpoint of the world where I didn't have a whole lot of money and, um, you know, uh, you know, I've had to I have had to work you know I've had to work hard to even get into college it took me four years after I dropped out of um, high school and uh, you know I, I I think not only for myself but there's other valuable members that are that are worth you know giving a hand to and I, I gotta say that's what evergreens really good for um, well as a matter of disclosure I I have answers to those questions too and I was more challenging Usually just to challenge you to see how you're going to respond to the question that people are going to ask because I, I think I, I think you're on it. I, I think you understand you're willing to defend Evergreen. Part of what I th I'm hearing is there is a real problem um, if communication is breaking down mm -hmm. on, on the campus then the outside community is going to see well what are we getting when we create a bunch of people that don't know how to communicate and don't know how to negotiate. <sighs> How would you respond? Because that's kind Ooh. of the reaction to that I'm hearing about Ev Evergreen from the outside. Yeah, you know what? That is so valid, and I totally agree that um, that we could do better at that here. Um, and maybe that's somewhere where uh, um, the administration can kind of step up a little bit more. Um, Brett's actually called for the resignation of the president. You you did know that, right? Really? Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, um, because <laughs> he's he's laying it at his feet, saying, you know, you you you, you created this situation, and, and that this is how. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he's afraid that if if something like that doesn't happen, that the college will be. Oh yeah. Def defund fund funded. Well, I mean, I gotta say, the protesters weren't just in how far they took their um, their demonstration. It wasn't just. Um, I hear their cry. You know, I hear what they're calling out for. So, what do you think they want? What's their end game? They want to be heard. Okay. Why um, aren't they being heard? Why do they feel like they're not being heard? Because. You know, I feel like here, anywhere, not just here, um, but like students of color um, on campuses, whether it's true or not, I mean, it's definitely, you know, valid, but they're not being heard. Um, and sometimes they feel like they're being silenced by white people. What if I were to tell you, what if I were to ar argue the reason, more the reason uh, they feel this way is because we've created this artificial c culture we call black culture. And I would say it's an artificial culture because it's not based on common values or common customs, but just based on the color of someone's skin. So black culture is a bad idea. We shouldn't encourage it. And, and we should dissolve those kinds of concepts of white culture and black culture. What would you say to that? I think, I think before I say anything definitive, I'd have to really think that one over. Okay. Because um, I, you know, I, I do believe there are some dangers into yeah creating that dichotomy between black and white. You know, this is your skin color, this is my skin color, because we all come from different cultures. And um, my culture is not white culture. You, know, you can call me right. You right. can call me an Alaskan. You can call me because I have a lot of different cultures that make up who I am. So. But and it has very little to do with my phenotype. Yeah, which was Brett's point. Right. I yeah. I wasn't like like I said earlier. I'd have to. I, I don't know if I if I was um, quite. I, I didn't look too much into into what he was trying to say there. Well, right. No. It's um, just it, and and he thing. is a biologist. Of course, he's going to say something. Yeah. <laughs> evolutionary. Yeah. You know. Of course. <laughs> that's his. That's you know, his job. You here. know what though, Brett. Brett is smart. I'm not gonna get too loud, but Brett's Brett's smart, you know, um, and and he really knows his language. 
And so I think we were talking a little bit about um, the the miscommunication between between everybody, and uh, that's like we said, you know, especially at Evergreen, that's something we could work on um, is just communicating better and uh, kind of meet, meeting at a middle way or whatnot. So do you have any reservations about uh, Brett's from what you know of his motives, uh, going to the media, and any concerns about it? Have you heard anything about that? Yeah, well, I mean, of course, a lot of people are against him going on Fox, um, the the Tucker Carlson right. report. Yeah. I heard, I heard um, a lot about that. Which, you know, it's funny because, as from what I understand, at first, Fox is the only like news outlet that was going to take him. All the all the liberal news outlets weren't gonna weren't reaching out to him, and Fox was the first one, you know. Um, and so, I mean, what what's he gonna do? Because obviously, I mean, his point's valid. Also, um, he, I don't think it's fair, you know, how how the students um, treated him. Uh, and so. I mean, he just wants to, just like anybody else, he just wants to be heard, you know? The, the students wanted to be heard, and he wants to be heard because he was, you know, treated very unfairly, and especially, you know, by the, by the faculty and administration, who he didn't have anybody backing him up. So um, there were no liberal news outlets that were reaching out to him, so Fox reached out to him. He went on Tucker Carlson. I watched uh, Tucker Carlson talking to Tommy uh, Tommy Sotomayor? No. Lauren, Lauren, no, Lauren. No. Um, There's a YouTuber now. I'm, you talked to a lot on YouTube. Yeah. Right now, so. I forget. Um, but they're, they're, the, they're very conservative. And um, I just, what I'm afraid of is, is at this point, Carlson is, is twisting the facts. Um, Who's Carlson now? The, he, he's who Brett first went on to. Um, oh, oh, well, with Fox. yeah. He, he's has with Fox. His, he has his agenda, yeah. And his so... Lines. It sucks because like he's he's stating like untrue facts and. Um, Do you have an example of an untrue fact? Well, I mean, like the very la he 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 interviewed with the Tommy Lauren, I think her name is, uh -huh. and uh, he's like he introduces um, he talks about oh I just had Brett Weinstein come on the show uh, a math teacher, and it's like that right there is an untrue fact. But then he went on to state um, that's a, basically that's facts a, about the day of absence, day of presence that were untrue. Okay. Um, and um, just just they're they're minor I mean the emotion mm -hmm. can be can be you know justified but if the facts aren't right and that's something I want to also get through is like the facts are important so for example Brett Weinstein people here on campus are just straight up calling him a racist well that's an opinion and unless there's any facts to back that you know that's what's important it's, they it's have a fact he's, he's, he's white yeah. no don't, is, 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 aren't all white people natively ra racist isn't that that's a very popular belief that's going around right now and um a belief that i also think that is very dangerous for people to hold you know um because it's it's saying you are this way and there's no room for change you know well and there's a lot of things about it it's it, the the flip side of that is this idea that black people can't be racist against white people that they can't discriminate and it's like that's dangerous because it takes away their empowerment they can be just as buttheads as we can, and we yeah, can, yeah, know, definitely. It's, it, it, it's a disempowerment. That's that's why I make that that joke a bit, and that's kind of the joke that yeah um, people are making. But um, yeah, I th one thing that I'm just looking at is I, I think it's a horrible waste to put all this money and resources into this college and have it. Um, just burned to the ground because it's yeah because it's and I, I think it potentially could if if steps if um, corrective steps aren't taken very um, decisively yeah um, because what happens is like in in a business if there's no confidence in in the business the first thing the board of directors usually does is fire the CEO because it's, it's like well we need to reestablish com yeah. confidence and so um, you know, and you need to make radical changes at the top because they just assume it rots from the head head down. Is that how that, that saying goes? Or so yeah, I, I get what you're saying. So yeah, so no, I understand what Brett's doing, but um, calling for the re resignation, and definitely, I'm glad he kicked in his heels and said, "No, I'm not going to resign." Because yeah, this is yeah. really the bad precedent to be yeah, set. Yeah, yeah. 
So the and so you and you were saying there was misinformation. What? How would you characterize the day of absence, or what? W what went wrong? Yeah, I, I I'd love to give uh, my opinion because um, the day of absence, day of presence. Um, I think it serves its purpose definitely um, because there are, you know, there 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 is still. I wouldn't necessarily say systemic racism, but there's racism racism in the individuals who um, are you know running. Um, um, running things from the top down and so um, it's really good to address but um, with with the way that they changed it for this year this is the first year um, oh well I'll start over for anybody who doesn't know um, the day of absence is is typically when um, students of color will leave campus um, as sort of um, I guess you could say a protest um, and to uh, um, I wish I knew the facts a little bit more. Um, the the, the I, facts I, are online, and I, I I can link to the to some more information, which is usually what I'll, I'll do. I mean, there'll be background stories. It's this is my first actually foray into the uh, evergreen. I've been watching other people do it, and it's all been off campus, you know, regurgitation of old footage. And I'm like, well, I'm pretty damn close. I can go and see if I can get a couple in. Cool. In, thanks. In, for, yeah. Thanks for coming. Um, so um, yeah, so yeah. If you if you can find the links or whatever, maybe I can send them to you because I have like I have the whole registration form too. I, I filled out um, to go to the day of presence off campus. You know, being white, um, they asked students this year to go off the white students to go off campus. Um, and the way that they worded it, it was never about um, nobody was forced to do anything. It was just worded whether you feel you belong to this community or to that community, um, you can make the decision to either go to stay on campus with the, the people of color or go off campus for the white people. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, I did feel a little bit pushed, um, you know, to, to go off campus, even though I just feel like it's weird because I've also been told that, you know, white people can't have this discussion unless there's um, somebody of color in the room. Mm -hmm. So I do feel weird, you know, just talking about just talking about it with white people, especially when I'm told that I can't have that discussion unless there's somebody of color. And I would personally rather have the discussion with people of color because I feel like they're they're very valid in the way that they feel. And that's the most important thing I want to say is that people don't feel welcomed in their community and that's something that evergreen does really well is um and olympia in general is welcoming um new members into our into our community and so um if people don't feel welcomed then i would love to address you know how can we um get people to feel welcome um but you know like the, the protests for example weren't wasn't a good demonstration of how to do that um so so yeah the day of presence day of absence um, normally, like last year and the year before that, um, students of color leave campus and there's activities and whatnot um, all the students can attend and um, some of them are off campus, some of them are on campus. Um, the day of presence is when um, the students of color come back and then we all, you know, like join forces and have the discussion together. Um, but yeah, this year they changed the format where they asked white students to leave campus and um, if they felt moved to, they could attend the workshop that was off campus, which had, I think, limited 200 spaces available. Um, and I signed up for that um, and I read the, uh, the seminar readings and whatnot for that. I was really interested in going. Um, and so... I mean, I ended up taking the day off because uh, just because of all the class work that I was um, dealing with. So, so did that seminar go on? Did the off-campus seven seminar actually happen? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, from 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 what I heard, that it, it went pretty well. Um, you know, there's faculty there, and um, you know, uh, students and and people from SNA, the student activities, and. Um, it sounds like they're really good at facilitating um, these discussions. Um, so it's definitely valuable to get into these discussions. 
Um, but, you know, Brett's concern was for one group to ask another group to leave campus is different than one group absenting themselves from campus to make a point. Um, and, you know, I gotta, I gotta definitely say that's a valid, very valid point. Um, and he wasn't, you know, necessarily saying that the that it's bad to have the day of absence, day of oh, presence, sorry, but it's important. No, that's no, no, <laughs> no, no, okay. How's it going? Good. I'm doing a, I'm doing a cookie. Uh, that we're making, we'll be making cookies, like protein cookies. Yeah. And I'm trying to start like a body bodybuilding collective on campus. Like bodybuilding? Would you be interested? Are you on, Are you a student? No. <laughs> oh. I'm I, I'm just doing a a vlog of ever, uh, Evergreen today, just getting people to talk about what's going on on, on campus. What's going on? I don't know. You tell me. That's why I'm here. Everything's good. Mm -hmm. Good. Glad to hear it. Have a good day. <laughs> Hey, hey, have a good day, hey, buddy. Dude, yeah, if you're trying to if you're trying to do that, uh, I know my buddy James. He definitely yeah, dude, because I just found out because you know the um, have you heard of protein packs? Oh yeah, dude. I yeah, I found that. out how to remake them to where they actually are edible. You know, <laughs> actually edible. Actually I, I like edible. Have, I can't like eat them for some. I'm lactose intolerant too. Weird. So you get oh, yeah. It. Probably yeah. shouldn't be chewing tobacco either, but you know <laughs> we need to healthy. Have a good day, man. Hey, good to see you. Hey, good luck with your blog. I appreciate it. Thanks. You know, have a good day. You too. <sighs> so, regular activity, people just want to pass it, you know, just... Yeah, get, I mean, know. we just want to... It's been, it's been pretty fucking rough, you know. We, nobody's been able to focus on school and shit lately, yeah. and that's what we're here to do. Right. So, that, you know, I think that's important. Um, we want to, we want to get back into the grind and, um, we want to, we want to get rid of all of the hate, you know, all the hate speech and, um, you know, How, what hate speech have you heard though? Just, just try to help me un, un understand what you see as hate speech. Man, it's, it's been both sides. It's, it's the extremes from both sides. You know, people, people calling out Brett saying he's a racist and get him fired. That. You know, they, they, they were treat that was hate speech, you know, the way that they treated Brett, the way that they were talking to the administration. Um, and then, um, you know, I don't know if you know, but um, our school has been shut down because of um, some threats called. And, you know, that's clearly hate speech. And, you know, that's definitely taking it a bit further than the protesters. Um, and it, I assume it's coming from people that don't go to Evergreen, that don't yeah, know. I, from, from what I, I actually heard the recording, and from what it sounded to me, my my gut, I used to do call center work, yeah. and I could size a person up in like six seconds. Um, in that experience, I, he's definitely an outsider, just oh, yeah. angry at, you know, you know, this hate speech, you know. Well, I think, I think a good point about, um, you know why everybody's upset at Evergreen right now for the way that they've handled this. Um, as far as anybody looking outside of Evergreen, looking yeah. at Evergreen, they're they're blown away because of um, you know how how the, the the campus was shut down by protesters and, and the administration let them do that. Um, I gotta say, um, the whole the whole idea behind freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. um, they're devaluing that by doing that, mm -hmm. you know, by, by saying, you know, Brett can't speak because he's white. Mm -hmm. You know, that's completely devaluing the idea of freedom of speech. Um, and that's really important to have for everybody, you know, and not to base it on somebody's um, so first skin color. First Amendment concept. You know? Yeah. They like, thought it was pretty important a long time ago. I um, mean, freedom of speech is why the protesters were able to protest, you know. Um, right. And so, you know, if, if we can't have it, if everybody can't have it, you know, whether, even if I disagree with you, I, I think it's important to have the freedom of speech and, and we can have a civil, you know, discourse about it. Um, yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was kind of, you know, from an outsider looking in, uh, I, I had looked at Evergreen years ago. I've, I've been in Washington since 87. Um, and so I always thought of it as a good educational environment. I have a learning disability. It seemed like a good fit for me mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons that n never ha happened. Um, 
because of the high standards of writing, I felt at, at the time. I, I don't know what happened, but a long, long story short is I never en ended up coming here, but I thought it seemed like a pretty cool place. Um, I've had some friends that have gone here. So, um, you know, there, um, a friend I know that worked at Microsoft, extremely smart, extremely capable, extremely self-motivated. -mo so I know there's some quality people that come out of Ever Evergreen and do some amazing things. And when, you know, and, and so I don't personally think it's a re red hot idea. I would rather fix yeah. what's going on. And I think it's a learning opportunity. And, and you seem to see, see it the same way. I say, okay, this is a problem, but we're not beyond being able to fix the problem. Yeah. Right. Which is, which is positive. I, I'm glad it matters that people come here that are the right fit for the environment and the environment is the right fit for them and not every environment is meant for everyone right you know i don't yeah I, yeah, yeah you know well and, and that's true i mean and that's okay i mean some environments are certainly better the, the grades are necessary for motivation for yeah. competitiveness for what they, they need that mm -hmm. where other people they they have a different walk and i do believe in both learning styles i, I don't believe there's one or the other i i, I really would like to see both um, having been in both at one point or another. Um, so yeah, I, I think really where this vlog is going is showing people what is ever, evergreen as best I can from a student perspective. I haven't seen yeah. a lot of those. Um, and, you know, is it worth saving? Because really, at this point, we're going to have to start the argument. And I encourage you to get yeah. out there and say, you got you got to say, well, why? Okay, what is the value? And what is it that we're trying to save? And why should we save it? And what is it we want it to look like? And what can we learn from this, um, you know, protest? Definitely. Yeah. Because I mean, I'll, I'll say... Evergreen is definitely worth saving. We'd be missing out on something huge here, you know, if, if, if we see this, this school close. Um, it, you know, it, it, does need a, it does need some healing right now. Mm -hmm. um, an administration and, and, you know, maybe some more subtle forms of structure. But, you know, what Evergreen's really good for is um, the interdisciplinary learning, which you don't get anywhere else, um, or at least at um, not, a, not a lot of places. Um, offer that and then the sense of community um, in the classroom and outside of the classroom and um, I gotta say you definitely don't get that at uh, traditional colleges um, not coming from my perspective I've never gone to any other traditional college um, but I have a lot of friends that have been to UW um, and Wazoo and they come to Evergreen and you know they, they share their experience on um, you know how, how different the environment is um, and so like you said you know everybody's got a you know a different learning style and um, you know some people do better in a classroom where you're getting graded in the tests um, there's that competitive nature but you know some people thrive on community and um, you know that's that's what we're doing here at Evergreen we a lot of our classes are held in a circle um, to where the teacher isn't you know um, you know just blurting out information but it's a discussion um, obviously you know they, they, they have a lot of information and um, they're they're the leaders of the discussion, but uh, you know they they don't just silence their their students out, and um, you know it's really good for us to have our voice and to get our opinions in. Okay, well here's some interesting things that people may not know, and I I don't know either. Um, have you heard of the concept of safe spaces? Yeah, 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 definitely. Do you guys have safe spaces here on campus, and how how do if if you do, how does that work? Yeah, um, I mean. I think a lot of the spaces here on Evergreen are safe spaces, you know, and, and I think that just really just depends on how it's set up. Um, the idea behind it um, is that no matter who you are, where you come from, you walk into this circle, you walk into this discussion, and I'm telling you, the circle, it's, no, it's, 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 it's something powerful about that. Um, you walk into the circle, and, and at face value, Everybody's the same at this point. Mm -hmm. And then you come to share and no matter what you say, you know, it's not held against you and that, you know, people will do their best to just to listen and, um, you know, respond with their opinions. And so 
even if even if it does get a little heated, which it does sometimes, you know, people disagree. Um, the idea isn't to you know to agree on everything. You, that's not going to happen. But if you do disagree, to treat it professionally and respectfully, um, so that everybody's voice can be heard and nobody's silenced. Um, and and there's no women speak first or no no. Okay, so there's nothing no. like that. It's you know it's a circle, popcorn style typically. Seminar, just you know, if if you have something to say, and often we also, um, you know, there's introverts and extroverts. You know, a lot of the time, extroverts will lead a conversation, but something important, you know, at the spaces here at Evergreen is uh, they they leave. They we ask each other, you know, if you normally speak a lot, you know, let there be some silence between one person talking and another one, because sometimes it takes the introvert, um, you know. Um, a little bit longer before they feel comfortable enough to share because they want to share um, a lot of the time but if if you have a lot of extroverts just blurting out blurting out blurting out they don't get their room to so I mean we it's, it's just about including everybody everybody into the discussion and also like asking you know um, did anybody not get a share has anybody not talked that much that wants to say something important before we close so that you know and I think that's important for any community it's not just like some some liberal ideology like dude people want to be heard and we all should you know we all should at least have the podium to be heard yeah I um, come from a, a Quaker upbringing went to a couple oh, Quaker cool. col- colleges yeah. um, so the concept of community is something I deeply appreciate um, and it is something that I think is so easy to brush over and, and say again it's like well I, I just want numbers that I can look at and that was the basis of that question and I, I'm a big believer in num- numbers I do want numbers mm-hmm. but I also know that sometimes us applying numbers isn't going to get us the answer that we want <laughs> um, and then there's actually there's a modern example of, of why it doesn't work um, do you know how neural nets work like neural networks? Yeah. I'm, I'm learning about that right now. Okay. So, so you can correct me if I'm wrong about this, but they're discovering that not having pre, uh, what we could call it, pre-categorized data, you want it un, very uncategorized because the neural nets themselves are going to come with a, their own methodology for creating the category. So your art, artificial categories aren't going to help it learn. In fact, it will make it more fragile by doing that. So that you might look at as a um, sort of a more holistic or a more of a specific category. I mean, how are you going to give a number quality to catness or to dogness or to these things? Don't really quantify very easy, yeah. e- easily. Okay. Right. So we do have a real example, a real concrete example of the difference between a quantitative and a qualitative difference. Katniss is kind of a qualitative yeah. versus a quantitative. So you don't need to worry about there. there is an argument for the qualitative experience, um, but recognize that it's in the envelope of a quantitative need to know, well, okay, what are the end and results? How many productive students are we getting out of this school? And that would be something I would look at. Oh, wow. Is instead of saying, well, what is, what's the productivity? What are the things? And I have seen some statistics. I haven't delved in it in a long time. But as you're going to have to defend the school, so I'm going to say, recommendation is that you um, look very closely at the output of the quality of student in terms of the jobs they perform, the work that they've done, and that I think um, so the rest of the community can say is this a good investment and why do we need to continue to invest in Evergreen because I do think that the survival of Evergreen could be could be at stake here yeah so something uh, my first year at Evergreen um, it it was incredible I was taking this class um, it's called Food, Coevolution, Community, and Sustainability. Okay. Uh, so the titles of these classes are awesome, which is another cool thing about Evergreen, I guess. But um, like I said, it's interdisciplinary learning. And so it's a 16 credit program that we take for a whole quarter. And um, 
there's different disciplines within that class. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're learning about food, but what's funny is it's actually not a culinary class. Um, we're learning about food systems, so we're talking food policy, what are the policies that, um, that work around food systems, mm -hmm. um, food chemistry, um, basically, uh, and I guess we touched on you know a little bit of botany too, we didn't really focus too much on that, but uh, looking at the botany of the plants and then what's happening to them um, when we're cooking them up or, or doing different processes, let's say fermentation, and um, so we're learning food policy, food chemistry, and then we did a little bit of genetics talking about um, genetically modified foods, um, which again, you know, you would assume like, you know, um, the, the, the liberal idea of, of GMOs are just like no GMOs. But, you know, in the in the classroom setting, we actually looked at it from the scientific point of view, which, you know, says, you know, not all GMOs are bad. You know, GMOs aren't necessarily bad. It just it depends, you know, depend. It, you, it, it's you know, you can take qualitative. Um, I'm sorry quantitative measures and you know look at the nutrients in a food you know and you know is this harming people or is it whatnot but um anyway the um something really important that we did um in that first year we went on these field trips um that were just like really really beneficial um for anybody that wants to move on after school and we went to let's see we did um, we went to the food bank, and that was cool. Um, so we got to learn, you know, what what does it look like um, as far as the structure of how the food bank is set up. Um, we did uh, local businesses, um, not only just in Olympia, but we all we went all the way down to I think Deception Pass, and we went to like um, a, a goat farm where they make goat cheese, and um, we went to a brewing company, a malting company. Um, and we just we had a, we, we got to have a discussion and basically get a lecture oh from um, from all these owners of these companies and people who run them and um, um, and some of them were evergreen graduates you know um, who are running businesses you know and um, we got to we got to get a uh, um, you know basically a, a one on one or one on thirty you know interview with um, with these business owners and you know. How, how did you come from Evergreen and, and make it into this world of, um, you know, making money and, and contributing to the environment? Ollie Kraut was one of the other places that we went to, and that's, uh, that's from Evergreen graduates, and they're, they're incredibly successful. The, the best sauerkraut around, I'm telling you. Like, um, I recommend checking them out if you dig a little sauerkraut on your hot dog. Nice. Way better than that, whatever that. Yeah, that, that can be some pretty nasty stuff, but a good sauerkraut, nothing like that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And so, you know, we, not only did we learn to, you know, make this sauerkraut, that's cool and all, but that wasn't the focus. The focus was on how did this Evergreen graduate go from studying at Evergreen and then running their own business that's mm -hmm. successful and selling, you know, their product all across, at least I know the West Coast, you know, mm -hmm. um, at least in Washington, Oregon, I'm sure too. But, um, well, you know, that, that kind of, that's kind of my those are good examples and necessary examples of what we're talking about. You know, people get into this qualitative, this quantitative stuff, and they're like, yeah, okay, I understand, but yeah, that, that's good, that's good. We'll have, to, we'll have to look up and see what we can find to put some, um, you can send me some links. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. And uh, we'll see if we can. Um, yeah, because I think at this point, it's how do you get past, you know, I, I do think there's something worth preserving. You know, and getting people, yeah. yeah. Whether it's you know, it, maybe it becomes a private college. I mean, that's an option too. I mean, that would, it would hurt. It, it, it would, would suck for people like me, um, because I don't have family that pay for college for me. You know, I, I've just never had. Anybody well, you wouldn't lose. You wouldn't lose Pell Grant. That the federal funding that you don't lose federal fund, for fund funding. No, no. The only thing you lo would lose is. The only cost would be someone would have to come up. I think it's twenty-eight mil, million dollars. It was what the state is is giving to Ever, Evergreen, and I know with that money, what they get is a guarantee. People that graduate from community colleges are guaranteed a spot if available. Yeah. Right. I think they're even like first priority if you've graduated from a community college in. Washington, you get priority in terms of placement in Ever Evergreen. Now, whether that's fair, 
you know, that's an op- open question, but it is taxpayer funded. They are. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, um, when I think that's the argument here is, you know, we gotta, we gotta prove to the taxpayers that this, this college is great, you know? And, um, yeah, we've sort of hit a rough spot right now, but, uh, you know, we, it, it's, it's definitely worth saving because we, you don't, we don't have this kind of education anywhere else. And like I said, we're, we're pulling up, you know, underdogs, like I guess myself, you know, who, who wouldn't have had a chance anywhere else. And, um, you know, I'm pretty confident in where I'm going. And um, there's other people who went to school here, you know, like Matt Groening, who did Simpsons, Macklemore went to school here at Evergreen. Um, you know, very, very popular people. Um, you know, they're not just, we're not just producing celebrities, we're producing local business owners who are really focused on sustainability and, um, you know, green energy, um, which is so crucial. And, you know, whether, whether or not you're a climate change um, denier or whether you believe in climate change, we can agree that we should probably be living a little bit more sustainably, a little bit more, a little bit, a lot more fucking clean excuse my language um it's fine on my block <laughs> that's cool cool right on dude um because yeah i you know and another thing if, I, if i'm backing up evergreen i gotta say again um, my second year here i was in a class called energy systems and climate change i was learning physics and energy systems and physics and climate change um so we learned the science of climate change mm-hmm. not the opinion of climate change um which we can form our own opinion from that whether we believe in it or not which was i think a good point of it but um you know what? What do what do the physics say when when we're looking at climate and and how do they they even showed us you know how we gather data to to make these conclusions and then um, you know another part was energy systems and how can we create our energy systems for like our housing and our um, you know business um, our homes and whatnot to create energy more sustainably because um, um, Whatever, I, I don't want to get into that. What I wanted to say is that we had a lot of hands-on application and um, we had research projects that are really crucial. And I'm not sure if you know that, I'm sure maybe other schools do this, but um, you know, especially here where you're given freedom um, and you're not, you know, um, not having to worry about the grades, which is good for me, you know, where um, I get stressed about that. And it's, it's really good for me to have the room and the freedom. I'm, I'm a self-leader, you know, mm-hmm. um, but you know, our research projects, we're looking at um, how can we create more sustainable um, energy systems and, you know, talking about geothermal, talking about solar arrays on our on our campus and, um, you know, uh, just, yeah, the, getting the hands-on experience to actually look at, realistically, not only, you know, what are the devices that we can use, but how can you move through the bureaucracy of getting those devices on campus and in your home, you know, moving through, you know, because somebody's got to pay for it, you know, it, somebody, if you, if you want solar energy here on campus, it's not just like, oh yeah, let's go buy some solar panels. It's like, well, where does that money come from, you know, and we got that experience in, in the classroom and we're, you know, my, my research group, we're making phone calls to um, local businesses talking about what, what does it take, you know, and what, what do I have to do? And, where do we find funding and then finding the sources of getting funding. Like we were doing all of this in the classroom setting. Um, so the biggest thing, you know, if you're a self-motivated person, Evergreen's a really great place for you to go. And, um, you know, if you, don't, if you don't do well with other people telling you what to do, um, mm-hmm. you know, but still want to work within the system, you know, it's, it's important that we fix all this. And um, there's a lot of issues. Um, so having that hands-on experience the interdisciplinary learning where you're branching different you know disciplines from um, or di- branching different disciplines is is so important you can't just you know study physics to to be the best physicist you should probably take a literature class also or you know maybe learn a little bit about biology because that experience is going to help um, but you learn it in context versus in an or you almost call it or organic learning trying to create an actual that's what i would call it i don't know if it's accurate but because really departmentalization is probably one of the big complaints about major universities a lot of people don't know this yeah. um one person that i follow for a long time is um a fellow named sam harris oh sam harris yeah my yeah. roommate talks about sam harris although we we got assigned a sam harris book um have you read free will oh yeah 
yeah, yeah. I, I haven't read it yet, but I have it. Okay. <laughs> um, I actually disagree with him on that, but that's, that's oh really. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. But one of the things I think is good, and I, I think, you know, thought leader is what I, I look at. And one of the things he, he's, he's looking at is um, the fact that we have too much um, compartmentalization. And actually, it, it's fragmenting. Because we can't make um, connective leaps. Right. Right. And, right. Which is what you're doing. You're making their, this is yeah. connected to that. That's, this would be useful here. This would help me appreciate this more. Or, and being able, able to see that. Um, and how that works together. We, we, you think of everything as biology, you know, but they're all interconnected. The, the environment created the system for the, uh, the biology to live. It, if it didn't have a rock to face to adhere to, I'm just trying to imagine it from a, from a ground up kind of thing. So yeah, that's what I've always sort of thought of everything. I think he did a really good job of uh, articulating it. Thank you, thank you. I would, I would also, um, I would recommend this book to anybody, anybody that's listening or to you. Um, it's called Imagine by Jonah Lair. Lair, that's what it is. Did, did you know, I, I've actually read the book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Talking interesting stories, Jonah Lair got um, in a lot of trouble. In fact, you can't even find the book now. They won't even sell, sell the book. Imagine? No. I, no, so. I don't want to prove you wrong. I just bought it on Amazon. Like, oh, oh, did you? Oh, well, you. yeah. Oh, really? But, okay, but good. I'm well, I'm, I'm well, well, I'm, I'm glad actually. In a way, there's a lot of stuff in in the book. It's controversial, but you can look look, look it up. He had a problem with the quote he used from um, songwriter. Who's the current songwriter? Uh, gosh darn it! Very famous songwriter. He. He fabricated several quotes in the book. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. man. So you you can look that, and he paid a dearly for for those fabricated quotes, and you know it was interesting how Sam Harris defended him. He was like, "That was wrong." Uh -huh. He had a chance. His biggest mistake was when he was caught. He he kind of he kind of doubled down. He was hoping they couldn't find where he he made the quote. And the, the investigator, there's actually a book about. Um, he has a section of, of a book, and Jim, he's prominent in, in the book, actually. So, yeah, you, you can look, look it up. It's pretty, pretty intense. It is a great book. I like the book, but it's so frustrating. I go, <laughs> why did you have to do that, you know? Because it, and then I ask questions like the Swiffer, you know, the, sw the Swiffer picker upper thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think about that, and I had questions about that. Is that really a red-hot idea, you know? Down. In, in in the book, it's a great idea, but then now I'm questioning those things. I'm like, how much did he kind of you know? Anyways, I had yeah. It, it, it sucks. I, I really like the book. Uh, well, I, and, and it's funny that you you bring bring it up. He's a very good write, writer. It was he's a great writer. It was a great book. Now, uh, now I'm questioning. I gotta go. I gotta go back through it. And, and well, we'll go and look up the article. The, you can go on Wikipedia. Look up look up his name, and, and they'll say the controversies, and they'll show you the places the mistakes that they know of, right? And people have gone back after they realized he had fabricated some. They've gone back, and I think they've. Um, so you can sort of read it. And, and then go and say, okay, well, this is what was fab fabricated. Isn't that funny, though? That, That's hella funny. That yeah, sucks. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good, good book. Um, Damn. So yeah. I'm, all, I'm always afraid of quoting it now. I'm like... That's so funny. <laughs> well, I, I never quoted it. I only read, I only read through it once. And so, um, I mean, I just think uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the concepts... I mean, the biggest concept, which I believe, you know, to be true, is that... Um, um, the biggest epiphanies, you know, this can even be opinion too, but the biggest epiphanies don't come from stressing down one road of a certain subject. Oh, it's be when you take a second back, you know, and you're just bullshitting with somebody, having a conversation, and then all of a sudden, bam, it comes out of nowhere. Right. And, um, yeah. you know, that, that, that right there, that's where the interdisciplinary learning and stuff comes yeah. from because, you yeah. know, you know a little bit about biology, you know a little bit about chemistry, but you're a chemist. And then so you remember this fact in biology that, that, that you know, you talk about neural pathways. You know, you got this neural pathway leading over here and then your, your chemistry path is over here or whatever. And then like, bam, like right there in between, it was just like this epiphany that like, um, that made you come up with like a noble 
um, Nobel Prize, you know, winning concept or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Um, the um, the one of the terms was the outsider advantage. You know, you talked about the mixologist. I really like the story. Oh the mix, yeah. Oh, mixo- yeah. Uh, uh, that was awesome. That was awesome. But but again, it's like I, I question that now, but. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks, you know. Yeah. Please don't, don't misquote people. Please, please, please. Because um, yeah, it just throws you in, um, throws things in doubt, and it, and it hurts. It, it hurts a lot. Um, but I still forgive him. I still think it's a good book. I've sort of come to come to accept the fact. Oh, oh well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But. Um, but we can learn from those mistakes, and, and I don't think throw people on the the trash heap, like you know, you know, back to ever, ever, Evergreen again. Yeah, I'll say uh, I, I, maybe some closing remarks or whatever, you know, just to just to help validate, you know, how I feel about everything that's been happening. But um, you know, I, I think I've, I've I've done my best to defend Evergreen's important. Um, you know, we'd love are, to see are, are you being paid to defend the? the <laughs> no, I'm paying. If anything. Oh, you're you're <laughs> you're. I'm so, paying to go to school here. So you're trying to make sure that your degree is worth something. Yeah. When you're done in a couple. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, like, I I believe it's very important. You know, uh, okay. and so, I I guess you know as far as like closing room, I, I would just love to say, um, we have some healing to do, and it's going to come from, you know. People come to, coming together, and um, um, it's important that we don't validate either, or we don't invalidate either side of the discussion. You know, something that I've learned right here at Evergreen. You know, we're not going to invalidate either side of the discussion, and we're going to come together professionally and, and talk about things in order to move forward. Um, because this is an important, you know, place for a lot of people, and um, we'd like to keep it around. And um, you know, there's there's faults and there's um, really good points from from either side. And um, you know, we're sick of we're sick of all this 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 high intense energy um, and a lot of emotion. You know, and, and all the hate speech. We just want to get back on track. And um, you know, the way to do that is to you know come together in a circle <laughs> um, and have you know a discussion where everybody's voice is important and having people of color. And, and different ethnic backgrounds is very, very important to be heard in the discussion. Okay. Well, um, keep in mind. Yeah. Well, one thing I would say: think, think about this. You, they're outcome based. Um, how are you going? If you measure the number of people of color on campus, if you want to call them that and you're not measuring whether they're the right fit. There's equity feminist, and then there's outcome, right? There, are you looking for people to simply have the same opportunities? Or are you looking for, to validate your theory by making sure there's people that fit that category? You know, and that's something that very, it's, it's a hard, it's easy, it's a slippery slope. To get into so when you are having those discussions i would be that would be my be careful with where people are trying to go i mean are you saying i don't have a voice because of the color of my skin i'm, and, I'm and, not saying that no 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 no, <laughs> no no i i know you're not but i'm saying that's that's the the question you have to always say is my opinion doesn't matter because of the color of my skin regardless of whatever the color is it, are you making that phenotype description right right okay because that's where we want to be very careful um, because what can happen is you start grouping people and yes you can do an analysis of uh, ethnic groups and, and you will see a behavior that a generality that we can assign like Asian people have a higher IQ than everyone else right okay so that's a generality of Asians in general but mm-hmm. it has nothing to do with a specific person yeah, so anytime we label people based upon the ethnicity we run into the problem of we're evaluating that person based solely on that one characteristic right so and that's what I'm always very afraid afraid of I see okay I see what you're saying so when I say um, we need to make sure people of color are included that's 
basing you know basing that judgment off of you know judging somebody on their skin color or whatnot. Yes, it's scary. It, it's it, it's scary, and, and that's why I, I understand the way we sort of we have put ourselves into this pickle by doing this, have getting the habit of, of doing it. But I, I think as as a, a mindset, understand it's a really bad habit to get into. You know, and I think Morgan Freeman says it best. I'm Morgan Freeman. I'm not a black man. I'm Morgan Freeman. He doesn't have to, you know, right? I mean, he's just like, if we just gotta get stopped doing it. We yeah. Oh, you know what? I, I seen that. I, I seen him talk on that. Yeah. He's just like, just yeah. stop. Just stop. We don't have white his history months. Why should we have black his history months? Because what we're doing is we're perpetuating mm -hmm. the stereotype. You know. I think. I, think, I mean. <laughs> The idea is just to be inclusive of everybody, yep. and so, you know, if a certain if a certain group, whether I'm grouping them or whether they're grouping themselves, anybody, um, we want to reach out to them and let them know that they're welcome. You know, yeah. I yeah. think that's the biggest that's the biggest message. Yeah, and and I don't know, I, I don't know the solutions, I, and I think it comes from in individuals. I believe very in each individual person. We carry the message with us. We. We put that out into the environment. You're a carrier, you know, she's a carrier, he is a carrier of whatever message it is that we're doing. And that's what this is about, it is propagating the message to say, well, this is a potential cure or this is a mindset I think will help the cure is if we understand these are artificial, very bad cultural. Race does not a culture make is my meme that I'm trying to get out there because right. I, I just want people to, to it, that is not a real culture. That is not a real culture language values a religion can be a culture but um your ethnicity is not a culture mm. you know it really isn't it you may you, you know you can have german ancestry but you're no way in german you're an american you're right you've been this is our bread. culture everything yeah. here you know yeah this is a culture yeah you have an evergreen culture yeah right that is a valid culture so that's what I'm just, is just remember what, where, what a real culture looks like. And, and then I think you can kind of steer away from it. And when you ask them, well, where are you from? Well, that's your culture. You know, it's not the color of your skin that's your culture. It's where you're from. It's your language. It's your values. That's your culture. And, and we need to keep emphasizing that. Yeah. Make sure that people understand why we're not devaluing them as... I just don't think, I don't take great pride in my race. Do you take great, I mean, I, I don't go out of my way. <laughs> no, I don't, go I, don't even know, of, I don't even know what I'm made of. I, I, I literally <laughs> just canceled, I got Ancestry.com for a free trial for two weeks. I just canceled it yesterday because all of this stuff that's happened, I'm just like, well, let me, let me see what, what do I have in me? And I, I went in and spent you know, hours and hours trying to find out and I didn't find nothing. And you know what, being who I am and perhaps the color of my skin, it's like, I don't what I don't know what I am, and I don't know what what culture I can you know I have. All I know, you know, and, and that 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 hurts me. I gotta I gotta admit it hurts me because um, yeah, I do see people on campus who who know what their culture is, and they can they can dig to it and, and say they can bring it out and say I have these things, but don't you take my things because these are these are my culture's things. And then I'm you know it. And I'm not crying. You know I'm not just crying being a white person, but you know. How does anybody feel when they don't know what their culture is and they don't have that to hold on to? And especially seeing it, you know, a lot of other people. Well, see, there again, I, you have an American culture. And as um, I think Steve Schaub said, said it best, a true in an innovator steals his ideas, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Steal like an artist. That's another good book, Steal Like an Artist. Well, and what I'm saying is culture is the same way. We steal the culture that we like, mm -hmm. you know, and we make it our own. Yeah. You know, that's the, the two-step process. You know, you're stealing it because you're making it your own. That's the stealing part. You're actually saying, I like that idea. I'm going to make it who I am, yeah. right? I mean, we do that as artists all the time. Is we, get, we get ideas, get an idea from here, get an idea from there, put them together, you know? That's how art is made. Every, what, what is it? Nothing's, nothing is original. Everything's recreated. You oh know? yeah, there's some recreation. And I, so you yeah. know, perhaps even even culture is the same way. They, I, I will defend um, at least just to bring up the point from the other side is that um, a lot of American culture was stolen. We stole from other cultures and oh, completely yeah, absolutely. disrespected their culture. But okay, I mean, you can so make that's, the that's, argument that we disrespected it, but we did what we always do. We 
they, everyone can't claim an original culture. Now, here's what I, I basically, this is my argument. I'm going to say, if you think you have a unique cultural thing, patent it. Okay, you get a patent on it, you get a copyright on it, you can claim this as being an authentic at, at that point. But that's what we have patent laws for. That's what we have copyright laws to say, to protect everyone. But you see my point there. Yeah, I mean, no. does who has who do we go to to say do I have the right to use that idea? Right? Yeah, that's, that's it's definitely that's interesting. That's my counter argument. I, I mean, as far as my own personal views, I definitely lean back and forth on both sides because I think it's valid to be upset. You know that that. Um, white crusaders stole and, and you know um, and disrespected so many cultures and then and then use those cultures to profit and then whatnot um, and as far as cultural appropriation goes you know uh, I think it's just about respecting you know where, where you get it from you know so like another thing especially what we learn here at Evergreen um, in academic work is you don't just uh, take your, your your best ideas from that research you paper um, from that research paper you you wrote or read and then, and then write about it, um, turn it into your own thing, and then say that, oh, these are completely original ideas. Right. It's important to source or to cite where you're getting that information from. So I'm going to cite all of the research papers that I read and I'm including information from. Okay. So, you know, when it, when it comes to respecting cultures, maybe it's good to, to source and, and cite to respect, you know, where, where you're learning this kind of stuff from. Um, and, and at the age of information that we live in now, it's a little bit harder because it's all blasted everywhere. So I mean, there's a lot of gray area, you know, um, but it's all it's just about respecting, you know, it's about respecting um, and having the conversation. OK, what exactly offends you? Well, the one that is, is classic and I don't know if you know about these memes on YouTube, the, the white dread dreadlocks, yeah. you know, and, you know, who? You don't go around hitting someone because they're wearing white dreadlocks. You don't say you don't have a right to wear white. You know, just because you're white, you can't have dreads. Right. Right. You, you know, it's very when it's a personal choice, when it's a personal freedom of expression. You know, do you really want to oppress the freedom of of e expression? Hey, you can say to the guy, "I think that looks horrible on you." I think you know whatever. I mean, I'm I'm okay with you doing that, but what I'm not okay is with you is telling someone they can't do it mm -hmm. because you don't have a patent on on it. Yeah. Right, and it's something they did a personal choice. So you just uh, cultural appropriation ends at the at, at the nose. They say so, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where I stand on that. To, to be fair to you, so you know where I, I'm, I'm all for cultural appropriation. It, re <laughs> <laughs> respecting, you know, respecting. I think it's rude. You know, if if we go around like if a white person runs around with a headdress, you know, like you know, mocking Indian culture, Native American culture. That's um, on him or her. You know, yeah, and that is that individual. And so it, it's not right to disrespect and, and to... Um, that's your choice. Is a, That's freedom of speech. Okay, so yeah, you can go around. If you want to walk around with a headdress on like that, I'm okay with it. That's your choice. Do I... It, it, I would, it depends what statement you're making. I mean, it's your freedom to do it. I, I would say it's okay. I mean, I, I'm really okay with it because that's a slippery slope. I, I know it's a hair, I hate the slippery slope argument, yeah, 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 yeah. but where do you where are you going to draw the line? Where are you going to draw the line? I mean, who gets to decide what's okay and what's not okay? Now, right. here's the thing: is it a patented head head headdress? Um, now, legally, I know they try to do this with the flag. They say this can't be used for burn. There's some weird thing they put on on there to try to prevent people from burning the flag. Mm. Our our money would be a good good example. You, you're not supposed to, you know, devalue, deface, deface money, money, right? Yeah, it's a good try. Um, people do it in, in, in anyways, but um, because it's value, you're you're destroying value. But don't you have a right to destroy? If it's your value, don't you have the right to destroy what's your? So it, it's it, again, it's a slippery slope to sort of go down that road it's, it's like if you're offended um, you know you, they, there's something it's okay for them to say well why are you offend, offended let's talk about it you know but why what you know I have to know specifically why they think they have the right to tell what someone else can wear on their head 
that that would be my. So you want to defend the right to wear a head, head headdress. So if I put on an Indian head, headdress, you say I shouldn't wear it. That it offends. Does it offend you personally? Me, okay, so that's the thing. Me personally, um, it probably makes me uncomfortable because of, you know, um, you know the, the, the popular view. Um, and, uh, but I, 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 you know, yeah, I guess, I guess personally I'm not offended because um, it's not coming from my culture um, or, or my heritage. And like I said, like, I don't even know what my heritage is. So, um, am I personally you're offended? You're an American. Okay, no. Let me just remind you, you're an American. I'm an American. That's Thank your you. culture. Thank, yeah, I was born here, born and raised. Um, you're Washington State, right? Damn. Yeah, Washington State, yeah. yeah. So, you're, you're Washington and Tony, and you're, Washington. you're an American Washington and Tony. Pacific Northwest, yeah, yeah. I guess. What's, what, well, you know, are you any religion? <laughs> I'm just asking. No. Because that could be Thank a part you. of your cult's culture, too. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that helps shape your culture. So, um, um, am I offended? No, but so you know, there there are other people that are going to be, and so I think I think you raise a very valid point that it's you know, well, hey, then you can you know have this discussion with me and explain to me, and yeah, you know, maybe maybe it is a is a an expression of freedom of speech, and um, for you to be able to do that. Uh, you know, it is. I mean, I, I think they are great discussions. I'm all about them. If someone is offended, I want to know. And I am, I have really thought about cultural appropriation a lot because I think it's dangerous. I, I think the ideas are dangerous surrounding it. And, uh, and I, I do worry that someone thinks, I, I don't want to give someone that right. Yes, you may be offended, and you're welcome to tell me you're offended. You can welcome to tell me why I'm offended, because my father, you know, I remember, and this is what's funny. This is, let, let me tell you a little story. Back in, um, I think it was as late as Bush, there were amendments to the Constitution. They wanted like, not to burn, be able to burn the flag. Um, military people are very offended when people wear khakis. You know, when you wear khakis oh, around, right, you know, look right. at how offensive. These are people that gave their lives to this, and, and people wear like purple hearts and, and, and medals that they never won. So you, you know, and they can be very offended by this, but from a const, but we have a constitutional right. Now they, however, as a military person, if they're caught with the wrong um, insignia, on, it's a court martialable offense, yep. right? But as a, a civilian, you are free to do it. You know, because that's the, that's the right that they they defended for. It's very it's very interesting, but that's a form of cultural appropriation, and and we we allow it. So if we allow the burning of of the flag, I have a hard time not allowing someone to put on an Indian head headdress. <laughs> I don't know. I I just think think of these things. You know, this is a conversation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This definitely. this is like okay. This is where I'm feeling it. You know, and maybe I'm wrong. You know, may, maybe there's yeah. another point of perspective that I'm just not seeing. Um, Which is, again, why it's important to have these conversations. You know, if there's people feeling left out, if there's people that are, um, you know, feeling offended by, by actions of other people, um, people who feel like they're not being included, let's sit down and have that discussion um, because maybe there's something on each side that we're missing. And it, the only the only way to figure it out is if you know to come together, um, which this school is really good at doing, and I'm I'm really really appalled you know and, and surprised to see what's been happening lately. But um, you know I, I don't think that it's something we can't move through. You know I think mm -hmm. we can definitely definitely take this and and learn a lot from it and and move forward um, in, in meeting you know everybody's needs. Um, from, from both sides, you know, whether you're conservative, liberal, you know, like we're a liberal art school, but that doesn't mean you can't be conservative and be welcomed here, you know. And and you actually colleges, it's something that is a big problem in colleges is that they are, you know, if you look at, they're eighty to ninety percent liberal, and we're not welcoming in the conservative methods. Look at what happened with people that supported Trump, right? They couldn't tell anyone because they would immediately be shouting down, they'd be called a racist, you know, 
homophobe, whatever other label they could throw at them just to shout that person down. I mean, why would you tell people who you're voting? So they couldn't have a conversation because no one was listening. Yeah, that's sad. That's that's really sad. And, and so, that's completely wrong, you know, to, to, to shut somebody down. You know, if you're a Trump supporter, even, no, like I'm not going to shut you down. It's, it's important to have the conversation. And at some point, they're going to disagree. You're probably going to disagree on a lot. But like, if you if you start getting hyped up and emotions and then just start shouting names that you're a racist or or you're a communist scumbag, you know, or you know, you're those are conversation stoppers. Those right? are yeah. Those are how yeah. we stop conversation. So when we don't want to have a conversation, and it's like the flat Earth. People say, well, we know the Earth Earth is round. I said, yeah, but isn't that a fun conversation to have with someone? I with, love it. Yeah, I agree. I totally <laughs> agree. I don't agree with them, but I'm down to I'm down to sit down and have that conversation because yeah. I'm like. What are your what are your points? A lot of the times, I notice that it's a lack of um, understanding of physics. Um, again, like hands-on experience here at Evergreen yeah, that I've learned. How would you help that person see it from your perspective? Um, and it was funny. I was in a virtual reality Google Earth. And I was thinking, you know, I would love it if someone could create a virtual reality flat Earth, oh. just so I could visualize <laughs> that what they're, that they think is going on. So, you know, that's sort of an example of just, there's always a different way of perceiving. Perceiving, you say, well, can you visualize your flat earth for me? And that's my question to them is, can you, I'm really having a hard time visualizing how this, this works. Can you visualize it for me? Like, kind of like a Google Earth, can you, can, can you do it, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And just have them try. Right on. So Cool, yeah. hey, do you think we can conclude this? And, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm I, think I, it, I think it's awesome. I think this is a great um, discussion. Okay. okay, well, this will be going up in probably full form, form, form format. Really? Uh, the yeah. whole thing? You're not going to edit it out? Of I, I very, no, probably not. Cool, right on. That's good. At least, I mean, in that case, you know, my words aren't going to be skewed or nothing. Well, no, it'll, it'll be full con context, yeah. So, And I don't mind if things happen because that gives the whole thing. And, and we need that. We need... Uh, the whole as much of the context as we can get so definitely i appreciate it dude you thank take you care. thank you yeah yeah you're welcome oh um